Hey everyone, I'm Joel Green and welcome to Curiosity Quest Goes Green, the show that explores what you, the viewer, are curious about. Now today our quest letter came to us from Charleston, South Carolina. Tracy wrote, Dear Joel, I'm curious, what can we do to help keep our beaches clean? Well Tracy, on any given day, most of us would want to be out at the beach. So because of you, we're going to learn about our impact on the beach and find out what we can do to help keep it clean. So let's begin today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. All right, so we're out here, toes in the sand in Oceanside, and I'm here with Colleen Foster. Thank you for having us out on a beautiful day. It's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. <laughs> so Colleen, tell us a little bit about the effects that we have on the beach. Well, when you come to visit the beach, it's a beautiful place to visit, right? Oh yeah. Yes, we've got beautiful beaches here in Oceanside, San Diego, and what we like to encourage people that visit the beach here is to take care of it. So to understand that if you come to the beach and you just you leave your materials, you leave your trash, you're going to have an impact. So we really try to encourage people to pack in and pack out. So there is no impact on the beach. I like that. So first of all, before we get too into it, what is your role here in Oceanside? Um, well, basically, I talk trash for the city. So. <laughs> you talk trash. <laughs> I talk trash. It's a good life. I enjoy it. <laughs> so anyways, I'm the solid waste and recycling management analyst for the city of Oceanside. So my goal, my job basically is to encourage waste reduction and zero waste. Oceanside's a zero waste city, so our goal is to reduce our footprint, reduce our waste print by 75 to 90 percent by 2020. So the letter that got us out here was talking about, you know, basically keeping our beaches clean. Mm -hmm. When you talk trash to people <laughs> about pack in, pack out so there's no impact, what is the first thing that you recommend people to do? And before you answer, uh -huh. I'm just curious, what would be the first thing that you would do when keeping the beaches clean? I can run across the beach and pick up some trash. Um, pick up trash when you see some, and usually when there's a beach cleanup, go to it. You can pick up lots of trash. Um, Hmm. You can reuse, remember to throw stuff away, and do not litter. Um, you could recycle and not bring plastic bags, just in case they blow away. When you go to the beach, use re reusable containers instead of something I would just throw away. Pick up trash in the ocean. All right, so what's the first step, Colleen? First step, keep it simple, it's the three R's. Do you remember what the three R's for, are from grade school? Reduce, reuse, recycle. Exactly, so we start with reduce. So it's all about reducing your footprint, reduce the amount of waste that you bring to the beach. So bring less materials. You say that and I think, wait a minute, people have trucks, they have station wagons, <laughs> and we have lots of stuff. I know. Bring it all. I know, we live for our stuff, yes. don't we? Oh yes. Well, why don't we live for having less stuff? <laughs> and it's actually really simple, and we actually have a zero waste family from Oceanside here today to talk to us about how you can keep it simple and bring less stuff to the beach and have a great time as well and be a part of keeping our beach beautiful. What are we gonna be doing today and tomorrow? We have a busy couple days ahead yes, of us. Yes, we do. So today we're gonna be enjoying the beach a bit. It's beautiful here, yeah. San Diego, Oceanside. We're gonna be kind of addressing the implication of tourism. So tourism is a very positive thing. In San Diego, we get 32 million people a year visiting San Diego County. We've got beautiful <laughs> beaches to visit. So we really just wanna help tourists and visitors and residents in our local area understand simple things they can do to lessen their impact to our community and our beaches so we can keep it beautiful for years to come. So we're gonna learn how we can do that today. And we're also gonna learn a little bit about how organizations are gathering together to help clean up our waterways. And then tomorrow, we're also gonna look into the infrastructure behind keeping a beach beautiful. Everything it takes for a city or a state or a government agency to keep our sands beautiful and gorgeous for the next day of visitors. Okay, well cool. This is uh, sounds like a lot of work ahead of us, so I think what we should do first is what she said, and that's Enjoy the beach! Yeah! 
Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Check this out. Approximately 80% of all materials can be recycled. So I'm here with Karina and family. And Karina, we're not just here talking to just any family on the beach. You have a very important role here in the city of Oceanside. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Oceanside Unified School District has 23 schools and they formally adopted a 75% zero waste mandate like the city of Oceanside did for all 23 schools by 20, the year 2020. How many other school districts in the state of California have adopted this? Uh, zero, as a matter of fact. So when you say uh, zero waste mandate, 75 to 90%, what are you referring to? We're referring to the amount of diversion from the landfill through reducing, reusing, and recycling. Wow, that sounds very important. <laughs> a very big deal. So this is why we're here. Tell me a little bit about what's in front of us. Well, we're looking at some convenience items where you pull off these film lids mm -hmm. and these get blown away or this is trash and these little plastics that can get left on the beach and birds come up and think they're food. Yeah. And we have some polystyrene. Oftentimes, this is a single-use Sing item, so we use it one time, we take it, and we throw it, hopefully it goes in the trash can. Right. Otherwise, it could end up, <sighs> look what happens. A little bit of wind and it starts to blow away. Yes, so one of the biggest things about being here and living on the beach is the wind. And if we can educate and help people realize that convenience, um, creates a lot of this trash, then we can reduce a lot of it going to the landfill and out to our oceans. You know, I'm a parent, as you are, Yes. and convenience is very important. It really is, especially with the busy lives that our kids have and everything. And what really shines a light on this as we're at the beach is if you look down this beach right here and you look at all those other parents and all those other people that also are dealing with convenience. Yes and you realize how big of a mess or how big of a mess we're potentially creating here on the beach. That is correct. And it's not only is it a mess, but there's potential cost savings when you take a little bit more time as well. So let's move over to what a zero waste family would bring to the beach. I'm just curious. This just feels different over here. So much cleaner, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so take us through a zero waste lunch experience out here on the beach? Well, what we're going to start off with first is, of course, your reusable cooler, unlike our polystyrene cooler over there. Instead of uh, styrofoam bowls or plates, we have reusable plates okay. that we can take home. We have cloth napkins, and we actually bring real silverware. <laughs> so number one, savings. We have the ice packs. You don't have to go and buy ice from the store. Then we always want to use reusable containers, so just convenience. Make your own sandwiches from home. Oh, they're already pre-made. They're pre-made and everything. Wow. So we have tons of these here. There's going to be people at home right now that are already rolling their eyes and going, okay, come on. Really? It takes an hour to pack something like this. How long truly did it take you to, to put this together? 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. If I, knew, if I know that I'm going to go to the beach in the morning, I start thinking in my head what I'm going to get. And the containers are right there. I pull them all out. Everything's in the refrigerator. Take a knife, slice it up put it in there and then put it in the, con in the container. Okay, okay, so another thing I know that people are probably thinking, because I'm thinking too, yeah, but you had packaging and all of this stuff. You took it out of something to put it in that. What about all that packaging? Well, I bought in bulk. So in bulk, I only purchased one container, whereas the packaging over there, there was 30 small packages within a package. What you're saying is I'm not gonna be able to stump you here, huh? Okay. I don't think so, okay. but you can try. <laughs> I'm trying, I really am. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Taking responsibility of your trash and recyclables as much as possible keeps harmful materials out of our waterways. So I'm here with uh, Patty from H2O Trash Patrol. Now, Patty, tell us a little bit about what you guys do. Well, we clean up the waterways on stand-up paddle boards. Tell me how this all started. Um, well, we started way back with our kids and just wanting to teach them to leave a place nicer than the way we found it. And we started with beach cleanups and then one day we learned how to stand up paddleboard and we saw all this trash in the water and we're like, no one's able to get that. There's just no way. So we came up with the idea of doing it on the paddle boards because we could get into all the nooks and crannies really easily that way. What do you do? You just hop on the boards right here in the ocean? No, we focus on flat waters, uh, harbors, river outlets, lagoons, bays, and they're collection points. 
so the debris gets collected in those points, and then we go out and scoop it out to be more efficient. Where's it all coming from? It's coming from all over the place. We are all connected. And something that has been dropped on the ground inland, you know, several miles inland, gets caught up in a storm drain or some kind of runoff center and into a stream, and then next thing you know, it's being deposited in the waterway and into the beach and on the, in the ocean. So same with the stuff that's up here as well? Does it end up making its way in the ocean? Oh, yes. Yeah, we can definitely tell what time of year it is based on the trash that we find in the water. Around Halloween, we find a lot of candy wrappers. <laughs> and there's a lot of fishing that goes on in the winter, so a lot of cigarette butts. Summertime, what are we seeing? Beach toys. <laughs> a lot of beach toys. Just being left out there, forgotten in the cleanup in the aftermath, and they get washed out into the ocean. How many pieces of trash will you pick up on an Audi? Oh, it depends on the waterway. I mean, we've picked up anywhere from five to 10 pounds in a couple hours to um, upwards of 400 to 600 pounds. Whoa, wait, 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 600 pounds? Yeah. Where are you putting that? How are you doing that? Well, we actually tow a trash barge or trash raft behind <laughs> us so that when our buckets fill up, we just empty it into the, the boat itself. Like a typical day, how many are going out? Well, here in uh, the harbor, in Oceanside, we only have two people going out, and we started out with our average of about 45 pounds in three hours. That was the average day, twice a week. It, like, breaks my heart in one sense, and at the same time, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> awesome. Well, we hope through this, and hopefully some people get inspired out there to actually join you out paddleboarding and picking up our, our waterways. That would be amazing, because I tell you, once you've done this with us, you, you'll never look at the ocean the same again. And you'll make a, a conscious choice to make a difference in your daily habits. What time do you think they start cleaning up the beach? Maybe before um, every, when everybody goes home and then um, everybody, there's nobody in the way, like during the afternoon time. About 11 o'clock. I would say around noon. Um, Maybe 10. About like 7 in the morning. Well, they have a limit to when it closes, so I think it'd probably be a little bit past that time, so they would have a chance to do it. Six? Probably in the morning, because then before all the people are there, um, the beach is clean, so when they go, it's, not, it's nice and not all dirty. <laughs> oh my goodness. What time do you guys start? 4 a.m. Thank goodness we can't see anything on the camera because you would have made us be here at 4 a.m. <laughs> that would have been terrible. So it's super early. Yes. And there's a lot that's going to happen this yes. morning. All right, so take us through what our day is going to look like. Well, let's talk first. Like yesterday, we probably saw it was a busy, hot day. In general, we get about 50,000 people on a typical sunny summer weekend here in Oceanside. Yeah. So a lot of people can mean a lot of impact. So our job this morning is to make sure we make that beach look as beautiful as ever by 8 a.m. for everybody that's coming to enjoy the beach today. And some people at home are going to watch this and say, Oh, well, what do I need to do? Because you guys are already doing it. What's your, what's your response to that? We need everyone's help because really it's all about people taking responsibility, packing in, packing out. So you come spend a day at the beach or a day at the park, please take your materials back home, recycle your materials, do better, use less materials, use less packaging, because really, you know, it takes hours for us to clean it up, but we can't get every piece. You know, just watching Patty out there in the harbor, just, I, I, I mean, I feel kind of bad. I feel really bad that, you know, her and the volunteers, and by the way, Oh, yes, you can volunteer to yes, do that. Yes, yes. <laughs> Paddleboard and clean the beach and the ocean is pretty great. We also do things here at the city to make sure that the beach looks beautiful. Okay. So that's what we're doing this morning. And I hear trucks going already behind us here. So what are, what are they going to be doing? So basically, when we first arrive in the morning, our maintenance staff, as well as waste management, we're trying to remove as much trash as possible as soon as possible. Because people like to go jogging at 6 a.m. People like to get here early to get a fire pit, have a great time. So we want to make sure that everything's picked up. And we also want to make sure to eliminate as much trash as possible so we don't have animals picking up, you know, the birds feeding in the morning, those types uh. of things. So we get the waste management trucks out. They actually, on a typical summer day, have to service all 350 trash and recycle cans by noon, twice. 
Oh my goodness. Yes. We also have about, I think it's around seven to 10 staff members that are constantly servicing the trash and recycle cans after waste management service them. And they're servicing the trash and recycle cans probably an additional five to six times in a day. So these trash and recycling cans are getting serviced eight times a day on average. Oh my goodness. Yes. What, is that that's just a typical... That's just a typical ty day at the beach. A busy beach, a beautiful wow. beach, that's what you're going to see. So that's why we need everyone's help to pack in and pack out. What else are we going to be watching besides people actually taking all the trash off the trash cans? We also have this big machine I like to call the claw. They call it the beach comber as well. And it actually combs through the sand to pick up all the fine materials, all the plastic toys left behind, or the cups, or the straws, or the forks and the spoons. And then also, we've got a street sweeper that comes through that's going to clean up the whole strand area to make sure there's no trash left on the strand. We have a beach blower theme. <laughs> I don't know what thing. they call it, but okay. <laughs> it basically blows sand back onto the beach because it's really important that we've got a pretty sandy beach for everyone, so we don't want to lose sand to the streets and to the strands. Pretty much it's just making the beach look beautiful and clean. So that's some of the big infrastructure. And then you're going to see all the trucks that come in. We literally have about three different solid waste and recycling vehicles that come in to service all the different types of trash cans and recycling cans on the beach and the pier. In addition to that, we also have to deal with servicing this long pier. We actually have a scout truck that has to go all the way to the end to the restaurant to get their trash and recycling and to bring it back. So it's all about keeping the whole area beautiful for everyone to come visit. Let's go. All right. <laughs> what is a beach comb? You put it against the um, sand and it like detects jewelry or something or metal like that. Um, maybe just a quick scam across the beach and um, picking up trash along the way. Um, a beach comber is a person who picks up stuff. Maybe it's like a, a type of um, car or, bo or boat that like um, maybe takes trash off the off the beaches. It's it's someone who goes and picks up trash at the beach. When you find a lot of trash in one area, like a lawnmower, might be a wave, I think. I'm here with Joe. Now, Joe, tell us, what are we doing out here today? We're going to operate our beach cleaner. We're going to pick up all the trash from over the, from the weekend. The beach comber, huh? Yeah. As you go up, picks up the trash, it, it combs the sand and makes it look combed. Just behind you, you can see on the ground, it looks like it, it looks like corduroy that yes. I see out on the... Uh... Yes, the, the rubber piece in the back will drag and make it look smooth and like it's being combed. So. And it's picking up trash it as pick, you're going along? It picks up trash, small rocks. Uh, seaweed. When you come out here after the weekend, I mean, do you just kind of know what to expect on a Monday? Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 we do, but especially when it's a nice hot weekend. Yeah. We get so many, uh, we got a big crowd, so well, they always leave more mess. What are some of the things that when you come out that you were surprised to see out on the beach in the morning? Big uh, debris, you know, people leave behind, you know, boxes, sometimes uh, barbecues, sometimes... Uh, like barbecue? Yes. Full barbecues? Yes. I mean, they, they, you know, the old ones they don't want anymore. As it's going along, are you picking up and combing, or...? Yes, it's picking up, and the sand will, f will go through the conveyor belt, Yeah. and they'll go back on the beach, and they'll, it will remo we'll move everything back to the, dump, to the container back there. And so I have my safety goggles on if you haven't been able to tell, you're gonna let me actually drive this thing, aren't you? Yes, I am. So the beach looks totally different. Yep. Wow. Looks like a great place to come and visit now. You know, it's amazing because as we're, you know, the beachcombers going through, I mean, I, it was funny because even after I hopped off of it, I'm sitting here kind of going through it and I don't see anything. Whereas yesterday and this morning, oh my goodness, it was, it was crazy. Lot. And really, this is all about not only what the cities or staff can do to keep it clean, it's also about what people do to keep, help keep the beach clean as well. We get a lot of volunteers every day that come support us. We have beach cleanups in general, we'll get two beach cleanups a month during slow season, and then we'll get up to 10 beach cleanups a month in summer season. So it's all about the community as well as our visitors to take responsibility. And, and really, I gotta give them credit it's about everyone being involved. Yesterday, we were like right here. There's right here. Tons of people yes. around. And when we walked off, I mean, 
even over there where all those tables were, they were full of trash. Yeah, full of materials, full of big picnics and trash cans full. And it's kind of scary. It's like, what's going to happen? You yeah. know, is this the end? But it's not. <laughs> it's not the end. <laughs> There's always a new day every day here on the beach. And I'm just trying to let you, it's 8.34 right now yes, in the morning yes. time. Yes, yes. And I think we might have gotten a little way in, way a bit, you know. We got, yeah, we probably slowed <laughs> it. Well, they let me to drive, drive they the They did let you do, just to drive the beach crawler. <laughs> It, it truly is remarkable how it looks right now, totally transformed. Mm -hmm. It looks like a beautiful place to come play and enjoy and, yeah. and take care of again on another day. All of this infrastructure is put into place to obviously keep the beach clean. And we have the paddleboarders out there picking stuff out of the water. And then we have individuals that are picking up trash themselves as they walk away. It seems like there's so much good going on. Is there really room for us to improve? There's always room for improvement. Everybody should take their own responsibility. An act by one person in the aggregate is gonna have a massive impact worldwide. So wherever you're visiting, there might be communities that don't have the resources that we have to keep an area beautiful and clean. So it's really about personal responsibility. And that, at the end of the day, that's what's gonna keep our natural resources, our assets like a beach like this, beautiful and clean. You know, before we wrap, Colleen, you told me something off camera, and I want to tell, I want to share it with everybody else here. Because one person, one voice, one small group of individuals makes a huge difference, right? Yes, indeed it does. All right, so we're going to take you to this spot where one voice, one group of individuals made an enormous difference an enormous in this community. An enormous difference, and actually took the city of Ocean Tide to zero waste. Let's go check it out. All right, All right. sounds good. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Did you know that recycling saves natural resources like trees and water? So we're at Buccaneer Beach today. All right. And the reason we're here is I wanted to share a story about how one small group actually brought recycling here at the beach to Oceanside. OK. About three years ago, I had a Girl Scout troop leader, a mom, call me and said she'd like to meet to talk about adding some recycling containers to the beach. And I said, OK. So I go into the meeting room and lo and behold, I found 11 Girl Scouts ready to have one serious meeting about getting <laughs> recycling at the beach. And the leader of the Girl Scout troop was like, we need recycling. I was at the beach recently and there was just no recycling. We do it at home here. Why aren't we doing it at our beaches? And we want to change that. So she was really holding the city accountable for why we don't have recycling at the beach. And they were so excited. They said they had already been working on funding and they said, we have funding to support public recycling at the beach, can you help us make it happen? So when they told me their budget, they could afford one container. They were surprised though that we needed about 150 containers to support recycling at all of the beaches and harbor. And I said, well, we can do one container. And they said, that's not enough. We really need to do the whole beach in order to make it effective. So we brought it back to our city council and soon enough we had everyone on board. And basically the purchase of their first container, this container, this it, huh? basically brought 150 public recycling containers to Oceanside beaches. And now we have one of the most comprehensive public beach recycling programs in the state of California. So what's sp so special about this container is each Girl Scout's handprint is on the container. It just like warms your heart. I hope I'm not the only one here. Like to hear that story, one voice, one small group, what an Make impact. Make a huge impact. What an impact. I love it. So this is a historical landmark, right? <laughs> yes. Not, not really it official. Is. Please don't give me a hard time. But no, it is. It's an it historical is. landmark. It is. And it means a lot our... here to our community. Wow. So, wow. It's Colleen, really thank a great you program. So much no, for... thank you. Thank you. Oh, I feel like I want to recycle something just to say I put it in a historical <laughs> landmark. <laughs> I don't have anything on me. I know, I don't either. <laughs> One time we have a clean beach. I know, that's <laughs> awesome. What's your favorite thing to do at the beach? Probably build sand castles with my brothers. <laughs> I like to surf. So boogie board. Collect seashells. Um, I like to find the sand crabs. I like to boogie board. Swim. I don't know, I think maybe surfing. I love surfing. <laughs> I want to thank Colleen, Joe, Patty, Lori, Jesus, Karina, and family. And I especially want to thank you, Tracy, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. Now, if there's something you want to know more about, let me hear from you. Go to curiosityquest.org.
click on the Send Us Out a Quest link and simply tell me what you're curious about. And who knows, it could be you that sends us on our next green adventure. Now remember, this is our planet. It's our responsibility to take care of it. So I wonder, have you gone green? I'm Joel Green, and I'll see you next time. With a beautiful, clean Southern California beach here in Oceanside. Oh, gorgeous day. Oh my goodness. Now, go ahead, we have placed all this trash around you. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm not I haven't paddled out yet. Because I feel like I'm I'm leaning. Okay, so I've got a paddle. And then it, <laughs> okay. I just I've only paddleboarded one time. One time in my life so far. And now I'm standing on the beach paddling around. Okay.